Okay, so today hopefully my microphone is better and we're gonna go over some scheduling stuff for stage one and stage two. I know Slee did a similar video yesterday, but I, he uh, missed one thing in particular that is I don't understand whatsoever. Let's get into it because there are some weird things going on. So, stage one will run from April 3rd to May 12th and we'll see the teams compete in cross group play with all teams from group alpha playing group omega. So uh, here are the quick little uh, EMEA groups. So Everyone here, so Calming Call will play all of these teams. Fnatic will play all these teams. These teams will play these teams. So these teams will play six games. These teams will play five games in stage one is how it's going to work. This will be followed by a playoffs, which will see the top three teams from each group compete in a modified double limb bracket from May 8th to 12th, where the opening round will be single limb and all subsequent rounds will be played as double limb. So that's the kind of first big change that has happened from last year. And funnily enough, this was actually revealed in this Pacific video that came out like a month ago before kickoff. And you can actually see that, yeah, this is a single a limb game. And so we're getting two less games because of it in the playoffs. So why have they done this? Well, the reason in my mind is probably because of things like this. Let's say that you are Furia. So this is the America's playoffs last year where there was a double limb bracket for all of it. If you're Furia and you win your first game against Leviathan, but then you have to play Loud and Loud are really, really good and they've had more time to prep for you. And so you don't win this game because you're playing a team that's just better than you and they've got more time to prepare. So then you have to come down into the lowers, but now you're playing as the team that lost in their first game. But now this team that lost their first game actually has more time to prep for you. And you've had to play back to back to back three days in a row while the team that you're playing has had a day off, you know, just watching your game, preparing for probably you because they probably know that Loud are going to win this game. A similar thing happened in kickoff to my boys uh, Wolves, where Wolves beat Billy Billy and they were clearly a better team, 13-9, 13-7. They then played against EDG and, you know, played a very close game against EDG, 2-1, lost, very close emotional game, at least a little emotional for me. And then they have to play Billy Billy again and then they lose this time because Billy Billy have had three days off preparing for probably who they know it's going to be Wolves because they're playing against EDG, the best team in China, of course. And Wolves have to play back-to-back -back on back-to-back -back days here against Billy Billy, and then they lose. So that's the reasoning for that change. I think it's just to avoid that kind of getting punished for maybe winning a game, right? You don't really want that. That's not really fair. So that's probably why they're doing it uh, for that. But group stage performances will play a major part in how the playoffs shake out. As the top team from groups Alpha and Omega will receive a bye to the second round. But having buys for the group winners could also lead to some strange scenarios as well. Because, for instance, let's take the EMEA groups. Let's assume that Group Alpha absolutely dominates Group Omega. I mean, you, well, let's go the most extreme case, right? Let's say all of these teams go 6-0 and and all of these teams are 0-5. In that scenario, an 0-5 team gets a buy. And there are multiple 6-0 and teams that don't make the playoffs. Now, of course, that isn't going to happen. That would be extremely unlikely. But there is the potential that, for instance, Kami Core, Fnatic, and Vitality are the three best teams in, in the whole league, and Kami Core go 6-0, and Fnatic go 6-0, and Vitality go 5-1, and one, and the winner of Group Omega maybe only gets two wins. That's an actual possibility, right? And then from there, you know, we've got a two-win team potentially getting a bye, and a 6-0 team not getting a bye. And getting a buy in this kind of format is obviously a massive advantage just for the extra time that you get to prepare and the fact that you don't have to play a game. But also it means that if you're one of these teams that gets a buy, you only need to win one of two games. If you win eat, like if you win this game, you are through. Welcome to Shanghai. If you lose this game, but then win your win this one, you're also through to Shanghai. So you only have to win one of two games. You only have to not lose two games in a row and you're going to Shanghai with that buy. But there is good news for the playoffs of stage one, because not only will the winner of each region's playoffs get three championship points, I'm assuming because it's a 12 team tournament Shanghai, that will be similar to Masters Tokyo, where you might remember the teams like Paper X and Fnatic that won their region last year, they didn't have to play in the group stage of this. They go straight through to the playoffs. So there will be a lot on the line in terms of the stage one playoffs to try and help you get all the way to uh, the playoffs in Shanghai. Okay, now let's move on to stage two. And with stage two, it's going to be the same with two groups. However, stage two will see teams compete in intergroup play they've put here, but I'm pretty sure that they mean intra group play. Yes, I will be that person. I'm pretty sure it's intra, where the teams from group alpha will play against the other teams in group alpha. So a pretty big mistake by Riot just there. But this is where the really weird part comes in. So qualification to stage two playoffs. We'll take results from both stages into account with the top six teams based on overall performance from stage one and two, 
qualifying for the playoffs. So I think what that means is that we'll get something like this, where we get more of an overall league table of where everyone is finishing and the groups kind of get abandoned for a bit as we kind of just go straight into, you know, a full league table. And so that makes sense, right? Like everyone has played everyone at that point. So yeah, just have the big league table. All is well. Well, this is where the really weird part comes in, because once qualified, the format will mirror the stage one playoffs with the same modified double limb bracket and a buy in the opening round from the top team from each group. So that's where it gets very, very, very weird, because if we take a look here at Liquipedia, it's got like, you know, almost this like bit of a different color to, you know, kind of symbolize the buys. But let's say it did finish with like Carmichael, Fnatic, Team Vitality were your top three teams in overall standings. And let's say that Navi were in fourth place here instead of Team Liquid. With the way that that reads... Now V would be the team getting the buy because they finished top of their group and Fnatic and Vitality, despite being ahead of them overall, would not get a buy because Calming Core are ahead of them from their group. So that doesn't make any sense whatsoever to me. And look, they made the mistake with the Inter versus Intra, so maybe it's wrong. But if it isn't wrong, then that doesn't make any sense. Still, let's move on. There are four qualification stops up for grabs as our teams uh, turn their eyes to champs. The winner, runner-up, and third place from the stage two playoffs will all stamp their ticket to Seoul. Uh, and uh, then the final fourth seed spot will be uh, for the championship points leader. Now, here's where the problem with the championship points might come in as well. Because, for instance, let's take Calming Core as our example. Calming Core won the kickoff event. That means that they've got three points and no one else has any points. But let's say that Calming Call win Masters Madrid. They also get three points for winning Masters Madrid. And so they would be on six points and no one in EMEA would have any other points, right? You then get points, obviously, for winning. You get one point for each win across the stages and whatever and in the playoffs as well. So let's say that Calming Call have a pretty good stage one, right? Let's say that they qualify for Masters Shanghai. They don't even have to win the whole thing. But let's say that they qualify for Masters Shanghai. At that point... Probably either at the start of stage two or midway through stage two, Army Corps might just have enough points that they are guaranteed to be that fourth place no matter what. And at that point, midway through stage two, let's say, there's no point in them trying. Why would you bother trying and not just take the rest, right? Sure, you're going to turn up for the match days because otherwise, right, I'll probably kick you out of the league. But other than that, I'd probably just be chilling and taking the time off and relaxing. Because the thing is, whilst they do talk about seeds for champions, and that's probably how they're going to draw the groups, seeding doesn't matter that much for champions, because everyone plays in the groups anyway, right? And you can't control the seeds in the other regions, and it's very likely that, you know, an NRG might not finish as the top seed, even if they're the best team in America's by the time champs rolls around. And so if they're not, like, why does it matter what seed you come in as, even if you come as a four seed? Like, it's not that big of a deal. So those are just some quick thoughts. Let's finish with actually looking at the EMEA groups. This is the only one we've got thus far. And to me, it does look like Group Alpha. I mean, Liquid and BBL, this is a this is a tough draw against, you know, these three teams that I expect to be, you know, very much up there. Group Omega definitely looking like the easier group of, uh, of the two. So, you know, teams like Foot, Heretics, Navi, I think we'll be looking at this group and feeling, you know, pretty good about where they are.